Hey, how's it going, everybody? Good morning. It's about 6.15 a.m. Just got off the train here in the Nana. And I'm going to go up sort of at Soy 7 slash 1. Kind of a notorious little street. It's all uh, beer bars and massage places. There is one really good music spot, the Green Room Bar. I'll show you that. And then we'll head over to the small Soy 7 has a big beer garden at the top and a couple of condos down the way. So let's check it out, the Nana, on this uh, Tuesday morning. I did just see something on the train that uh, I'm going to speak about. There were two tourists. Now, they didn't know the rules, but they were wearing big, gigantic backpacks. I don't know. They had more things in this backpack than I even own. And they're walking around the train, knocking into everybody. Even with a small backpack on these busy trains, you take it off and carry it. You don't walk around just clanging into everybody. If uh, if those folks can't hold their big, huge backpacks, then they need to take a cab. It's just not uh, the correct etiquette on these busy trains. They even make an announcement to uh, please take your backpacks off. So this isn't my rule. It's just uh, it's just the way it is. And the sun's just starting to come up. So let's get an early start. Here it is, Sukhavit, Soy 7-1. Just under the Nana BTS. If you remember the scene in The Hangover 2, the next morning, well, the first night they were out partying and uh, carrying on. I think a lot of that was shot in Soy Cowboy and then some up in Pat Pong. They kind of cut it together. But the next morning when everything was on fire and they returned to the scene of the crime, that was this street, Soy 7 slash 1. Right at the top here is the Thai kitchen. Even at uh, 6 in the morning, I'm a little careful <laughs> filming in some of these sections of town because uh, not everybody wants to be on film. And, and there's some guys over here shooting pool, so they're pulling an all-nighter. Right at the top of the soy are some uh, massage parlors with a lot of ladyboys hanging out. And yeah, I'm not going to stick the camera in this bar, but uh, these, guys are, these guys are still partying. <laughs> Or maybe the bar opened at 6 in the morning. I'm not sure. Now this is the Atlas Small Hotel. This would be a pretty noisy place to stay, but you'll be right in the heart of things. And here's the Espira Sukovic. Another smaller hotel. And that was the uh, cat bar I just walked by. And this is laundry delivery, I believe. Yeah, so you can imagine uh, on kind of this party street, these are going to be noisy little hotels late into the night. And this is the Victoria Bar. I know I'm showing you these places with everything closed up, but uh, good luck pulling a camera out during the day. It, one of the bars is, uh, well, two of them are actually even open at this hour. They just stayed open all night. This is the Shots Bar right across the way. So here's the Fern, or Red Fern Bar. And then right next door is the Magic Table Bar. Good morning. Yeah. There's some ladies already sitting over here at the Crazy Bar. So I'm not going to they're already kind of hiding their face. I, I hate that. I'm not going to film them, but uh, they don't do anything but uh, put a menu over their face, which I, I don't like. But this is the Down Under. This is a great little Australian bar. You can come in here and catch all the different uh, games. Sometimes they have the barbecue going out front. And this is the... Wood bar on the right. And over here is Annie's Soapy Massage. If you remember Annie's, it used to be in the uh, Soy 4 area for years. It's now on 7 slash 1. Yeah, there's people in there having a beer. Jeez. In the uh, the entrance. Good for them. Pulling, pulling an all-nighter. And here's the green room. Okay, uh great place for music in the middle of all this craziness you can come here and check out the rolling stones cover band the midnight ramblers they play most fridays i think they're the first band usually so come early like 7 30 
check them out or come any night really uh they're closed on monday but any night is a good time live music here at the green room bar totally normal place it's uh all kinds of people and their partners in there that's just a part of bangkok sometimes you need to walk up a a crazy little street to uh, get to a cool place and this is another hotel right in the middle of the craziness the i check in nana and this place has changed names a couple of times. It's the Orange Bar, right across from uh, the Green Room. And then down the way, I want to say that used to be Mike's. Well, here's the meeting bar on the right. This is a, just a typical bar. Pool table, sometimes two. And yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, it's still Mike's Corner Bar. And above Mike's is the Maxim's Inn. So that's Soy 7 slash 1. Not a very long street, but if you come here in the evening, yeah, it's crazy. And I've certainly never been down here at uh, 6.20 in the morning, but it's kind of good to see people still drinking beer and shooting pool. So as we're leaving 7 slash 1, we're going to take a right, head up Sukhumvit just a short distance to Soy 7. The seven slash one just means seven and a half. Not very hard to figure out, but oftentimes you'll find a seven slash one slash two slash three. And right at the top of seven slash one is a digital store. You can bring in your phone or USB thumb drive, get those immigration copies you need or possibly passport photos, I would assume. And it looks like the brand new JLK building is uh, almost open and ready for business at the lobby i still see a little construction going on but yeah i watched this place go up in uh, no time and here's soy seven just feet from the other end of uh, bts nana if you go up the street not even two blocks on the left we're on the odd side over on the even side soy four that's where you'll find the uh, notorious nana plaza red light area and here's Soy 7, about where that cab is, that the light's down the way, that's almost the end of the Soy. So it's not very long, and on the left side is a pretty huge beer garden. I want to say 15 or 20 small beer bars. And at the very top is a, a dispensary. The rumor on the street is uh, things are going medicinal towards the end of the year. I, I don't know if they can put that genie back in the bottle. Uh, there's just these dispensaries everywhere, but it'll it'll probably just be a matter of walking in and talking to an iPad about your headaches, and off you go. Yeah, all these places are going to be closed up, but here's the uh, Big B's Bar and the Center Point. There might be one little place open in there, and some guys shooting pool, but not. It looks pretty closed up. Yeah, just these garage doors will swing up and. You come walking through here at uh, 9.30, 10 o'clock at night, and it'll just be crazy. It's a little loud. I, I don't mind loud. I mean, loud music has always been my thing. But this beer garden, it kind of seems like uh, they're pointing the speakers out, and uh, it just kind of turns into a mishmash of, uh, of loudness. But you can still find some fun spots. Yeah, it's all it's all dark right now. I've been in this beer garden a couple of times. Uh, my buddy likes to play pool in there. That's usually our our meeting spot. There's the drop in on the corner. Yeah, you can see every one of those garage doors is just another separate little bar. And I guess it's just called the beer garden. So we can soy seven. And if you want to hang out at the beer garden, you might as well stay at the Park Hotel. It's uh, 50 feet away. Six-story unit. And that's Sukhumvit at the end. There's the beer garden. And then on the other side of the street is the Pepper Mill Restaurant at the bottom of the Boulevard Hotel, Bangkok. And it says they have a coffee club in there. I'm not a big coffee guy, but uh, it's similar to a Starbucks. Well, I don't know. It has more food. I think I've ate at a coffee club once. And this is a pretty beautiful condo complex. It's called the Crystal Cart. A 
three minute walk to Nana BTS. I apologize, it's still a little early. It's the Crystal Court. I was looking at it sideways and with uh, pretty much zero sleep. Hi, good morning. They look, uh, they look like huge units. And the sign says they're apartments for rent. I'd call them condos. This is really the only problem in Nana. I've, I've been walking down the street uh, five minutes and probably five or six cabs and motorbikes have pulled over. Uh, hey, let me take you on a tour, this and that. My friend lives over in Asulk and he says it's, it's kind of a constant problem over there as well. Um, it's a zero problem where I live up in Prom Pong, just not even a mile from us, so about half a mile. So put that in the back of your head if uh, that's going to bother you. If you stay in a, a tourist area, they're going to assume you're a visitor. And I'm not sure what this little compound is, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind living up on that top floor apartment. There's all kinds of uh, housing options around Bangkok. But most of us expats seem to end up in the uh, just typical buildings. That's what you're going to find the most of. But some of these other cooler type apartments, you might luck into one of those. This looks like a hotel. The How am I going to say that? The Felicita? Felicita? It's the Felicita. And the Pete's restaurant says it's a key premier property and this is kind of an interesting building the cameo court it's just six or eight stories tall but uh, big huge balconies and just across the way from that is the La Residenza and then we have the Siva court It looks like an older building, but very spacious. Another gated home. And here's the Dazzle building. Right next door is the Mac Boutique Suites. And another big, beautiful home behind gates. And here's the Residence One, which I'm assuming is a hotel. But then down below, they have the RC International School van. He might just be picking somebody up. Yeah, says it's a nursery and kindergarten. I see a, a young kid in the one of the seats. Some of these expensive uh, expat schools, you'll see the vans all over town picking up the kids, including my building. And it looks like we just have some private homes on the right and left. And this looks like, uh, I see car parts. Repair shop. I don't know what this is. Stick my head in there before I get kicked out. That's what I got. Yeah, some kind of private building. Probably shouldn't have uh, just walked in there. It looks fairly secure. There's a lot of uh, embassies and consulates just all over the place. I don't see any flags or signs. And usually uh, they don't have an open gate like that. So I'm assuming this is just a business. Here we go. This guy's going to ask me, do I want a, a tour or a ride? Here's another beautiful home. Not surprisingly, he just drove by. And it looks like we have a nice building at the end here. And getting our boundaries, I'll show you how far we are. Well, you can almost see Sukhumvit at the end. It's uh, from here to the BTS six minute walk and another building I'm not sure if it's a hotel or apartments I assume apartments the avatar suites maybe six stories coffee shop coffee point down below 
And that is the MM Court at the end. Let's go take a peek. No, it does say it's a hotel. The uh, Avatar Suites Hotel. Okay, see, I uh, always just made the left turn back there. I, I don't think I ever came this far. So here's the MM Court. And just a private home. And the Mayflower House City Apartments. And that's about it for Soy 7.5 and, and Sukhumvit Soy 7. There's a little side street here that takes us over to Soy 5, but uh, it looks like it's mostly under construction. Yeah, I guess somebody lives there. Private house, and this building is uh, maybe being renovated, so I'm not sure if this is a part of Soy 5 or soy seven so we're gonna we're gonna call it a video here and i appreciate you watching for more looks around bangkok please uh consider subscribing to the channel we'll see you later